and the administration of the Mama Lucy Hospital was today put to task to explain how a new mother and an accident victim lost their lives while at the facility. The Senate Health Committee probing the circumstances under which Maureen Otieno, a new mother, died after being handled at the hospital, and Edward Otieno, an accident victim, died at the facility before being attended to. The hospital's administration refuted claims of negligence and cited lack of sufficient manpower and resources as challenges that delay service at the institution. The management of the Mama Lucy Hospital was hard-pressed to explain how a new mother was allegedly left to bleed to near death at the facility soon after delivering twins via cesarean section at the hospital. The hospital has been accused of failing to act swiftly to stem the bleeding that developed after Maureen delivered that eventually led to her death. The deceased husband had emotionally narrated the sequence of events from that fateful day. <laughs> The hospital's management refutes that version of events and claims that the deceased only started bleeding hours after the surgery. So between 6 a.m. when the operation is done up to 10 a.m. she is with us inside the theater. So to say that the husband was complaining at 8 a.m. the patient is inside the theater. The husband has not seen that patient yet. So the patient is released from theater to the ward. The bleeding is noted 1 p.m. On 5th September 22nd. Even then, the hospital says its staff handled the situation as required, taking the new mom back into theater where she underwent a blood transfusion before being referred to Kiambu Level 5 Hospital. It is true the patient had bled. It is true that intervention could have been done earlier. It is true that as we were taking this patient to Kiambu, we were still transfusing. Blood is a save, it saves, it saves life. That's why we are, we were transfusing. She had a blood. The late Maureen would then depart Mama Lucy for Kiambu at 11 p.m. and arrived an hour later. Her husband had claimed that the driver of the ambulance appeared unsure of where the referral hospital was, delaying the critically ill patient from accessing the required help in a timely manner. The hospital says this simply isn't true. The driver I engaged for the ambulance, is he familiar with uh, Nairobi? Very well. Very well. And it's at night, there's no traffic jam. There's no question that he got lost. Those are just fabricated stories. The hospital also defended its handling of the late Edward Otieno, who died in an ambulance at the hospital. The late Otieno had been involved in an accident and had been brought to the hospital's emergency unit. According to the on-call doctor, the patient refused care and his family demanded a referral to another hospital. But in the ensuing time before the transfer, the family of the deceased accused the hospital of negligence. Please, can you hurry up? Because nobody will touch your son if nobody gets, if no relative gets there. Uh, this is a patient who refuses to do all these things. And uh, even on the arrival of the relative, uh, I think uh, we can ask because uh, it was made clear by me that they wanted a referral to go for all of these investigations. On 5th September 22nd. The hospital's medical superintendent, Emma Mutio, says the hospital is struggling to serve a large population with limited resources, equipment and medical supplies and no ICU beds. The health committee has asked the hospital to appear before it one more time and availed the CCTV footage of the time spent at the facility by the two deceased patients. At the same time, Nairobi County Governor Johnson Sakaja who appeared virtually before the committee, took responsibility for the state of health facilities in the city with a promise to work at improving them. Brenda Wanga, Citizen TV, Nairobi.